everybody and welcome to another AT Improvements video. Um, on today's project, we're taking our old battery powered smoke alarms and we're gonna be replacing it, oh, with a hardwired combination smoke alarm and carbon monoxide detector. So with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so first off, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and twist your existing smoke alarm and pull it down from the bracket. Then go ahead and get a screwdriver and unscrew the set screws that are mounting the existing bracket to your ceiling. Okay, next up, you're gonna grab your electrical ceiling box that I just picked up from Home Depot and kind of trace around where you're gonna to need to make a cutout penetration in the ceiling. So I'm just placing it up there and using a pencil to mark the outline. So what I'm using to make this cut is a DeWalt jab saw. You're going to want to go ahead and get it started either by basically tapping it in uh, with your palm or you can use a drill bit just to kind of get it started. But essentially once it's in there, you're just going to go back and forth until you've cut out your outline. And as a reminder, all of the tools and products that I use in the video, um, the links for those will be in the description. So feel free to check those out so you know exactly what I'm using. Okay, so you have your box here and essentially what you're going to do is when you stick it up into the actual ceiling, the way these things work is when you start tightening it, the wing opens up and then as you continue to tighten down, it basically forms a connection between this right here and the drywall such that it can't slide down anymore. So you're gonna stick it up in the ceiling and once it's already up in the ceiling, you're gonna start to screw it in. And essentially this is gonna continue to come down until it clips against the drywall. So again, we're gonna have three of these, we'll put it up there, the flap will come out, and this will crimp down on the drywall. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put our ceiling box up in the attic now. This is gonna house our wires later on. So just like we said previously, you're gonna go ahead and screw each of these Phillips down. That's gonna open up the plastic wing and then tighten down on the drywall. So this is the view of the ceiling box installation from the attic. So you can see how the plastic wing opens up there and then as you tighten the Phillips, it'll basically tighten it against the drywall. Okay, so at this point, you're just gonna go ahead and put your, uh, your set screws in. So I got two of these and then go ahead and set those in there. So once the mounting screws are in, you're gonna go ahead and take your bracket, put it in place, and you're gonna twist it such that the screw fits nicely within the bracket. And once you have it where you want it, you're gonna go ahead and just tighten it down with the screwdriver. This is a reminder that I am not a professional or a licensed electrician, and that all electrical work should be performed by a licensed professional electrician. Do not attempt this yourself. We're now getting into the electrical portion. So head down to your panel, turn off the breaker that's gonna be supplying the supply box in the attic, then grab your Romex cable and climb up. Okay, so we're up here in the attic now. This is the existing electrical supply box that I'm gonna be using to supply power to the new um, smoke detectors that we put in. So I'm checking right now with a non-contact voltage tester to make sure that we have no power, and we don't because we already turned that off in the basement at the uh, supply panel. Okay, with the power off, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull the existing wires out of the way so I have more space to work. And then I'm gonna knock out the metal um, knockout panel with my wire uh, strippers right there and pull it out of the way. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take my wire strippers and remove the sheathing from the Romex cable. And I just pulled that off right there, as you can see. And then I'm gonna go ahead and separate my neutral wire, which is the white, the ground, which is the bare copper, and then the hot, which is black. And then I'm going to strip those out so that we can go ahead and connect them later on. And then once I had all three of the wires stripped, I go ahead and feed it through um, the knockout panel that we just removed so that all of our wires are within the junction box. Then I went ahead and removed the existing wire caps from the existing wires. And then the idea now is we're just gonna untangle everything and get them separated so that we can go ahead and wire all of the respective wires together, which is neutral with neutral, uh, hot to hot, and then ground to ground for all three of the wires going into the junction box. Okay, so what you're seeing right now is I'm taking the white neutral wires and I'm putting all three of them together and uh, don't mind the dog shaking in the back and twisting them together with some pliers. And once we have those twisted together, I'm going to go ahead and just trim the jagged edges before putting a wire nut on. 
And then as you see here, I'm doing the same thing with the three black hot wires, put them together, twisting the ends together with pliers. And once they look pretty good all together, I'm gonna trim it again with the wire snippers and then put the wire nut on that one as well. And it's always a good idea to come back with some electrical tape and tape the wires to the wire nut, just so that when you push it back into the box, none of the wires come loose. And I didn't show it, but I did the same process with the uh, grounding wires. Another good idea is to go back and secure the loose wires to a stud up in the attic, just so you have them under control and they're nice and neat. Now, with the other end of this Romex cable attached to the junction box that we just wired up supplying power, we're not going to take the other end and run it down through the ceiling box that we installed previously. Um, and then from that point, we'll go ahead and wire up our smoke alarm. Okay. So we have our wire coming down now. So we're gonna basically take our carb, uh, combination uh, carbon monoxide smoke alarm and wire it up. So we have our neutral, which is always white. We're gonna take this and what I like to do is when you have the stranded and then the actual rigid is just to wrap it around as best you can right there. And once you have that done pretty well, you're gonna take your wire nut and run it over top and twist it until it's tight. And then at this point, we're gonna go ahead and take our, our black, which is hot, and do the same thing. So we have it here, and then I'll try to get my hand out the way. What you're gonna wanna do is basically wrap this around as best you can, kind of just like that. And then you're gonna go ahead and take your wire nut, and I'm gonna make sure I like how that's looking. And you're gonna wire it up until it's tight. Okay, and this orange wire here, this is a carrier wire. So essentially, if you have a bunch of smoke alarms, you can wire all these together such that if this one goes off, it sets all the ones that's connected to off. But we're not doing that in this case since they're literally right next door. So just to make sure we have a good connection, we're gonna take some electrical tape and wrap it around to make sure these things don't come loose anytime soon. Hopefully never. And then we'll do the same thing on the hot over here. Get that there. And at this point, you can try to feed back as much of the cable as possible. You're gonna go ahead and tuck your wires up into the box. Just kind of however they can fit up in there. And at this point, you're gonna go ahead and set it until it clicks. Pull your tab out there. Okay, I just went downstairs and flipped the circuit breaker, so we now have power going to this smoke alarm. And as you can see by the green light, we're all good to go. Okay, the last step of the installation, we have our green light in there. We're just gonna give it a test. So you just push and hold it. There's that. We should do it three more times. And that should do it. We should be ready to rock and roll. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could smash the like button and subscribe because it will definitely help my channel out and help me to put out some more videos for you. So until next time, thanks.